Okay, so let's talk parts now. So the most important part is probably the main MOSFETs. Uh, for the main MOSFETs, I've chosen the IRFP4568. Uh, it's a MOSFET capable of blocking 150 volts uh, with a typical on resistance of 4.8 milliohms. I'm going to have a total of 10 of these in parallel for both the main uh, MOSFET bank as well as the uh, motor flyback bank. So it's going to be a total of 20 of these MOSFETs. Uh, next up, uh, let's see here. Uh, the current sensor I'm going to be using is the uh, is a Tamira Hall Effect current sensor. Uh, so it will be uh, isolated uh, from the uh, uh, bus bar it will be measuring. Um, I'm going to be using the 600 amp model, which uh, although it's uh, stated as being the 600 amp model, is capable of reading up to uh, 800 amps without without issue. Um, so I'm going to be using this model. Um, another good thing about this is that this sensor is that it uh, has a very quick response time, uh, typically less than 10 microseconds. Um, so it's it'll be uh, very quick, um, which is what I need to uh, be able to control the current going through this thing. Uh, one thing to keep into consideration here is the uh, the attenuation of it. Uh, it's it depends on uh, frequency. So in the frequency we're going to be using it uh, using it in maybe about 20 kilohertz there. Uh, it might have about uh, 1 dB of gain, so uh, during the design we're going to have to take that into uh, consideration. Alright, uh, next up, uh, for my analog to digital converter I'm going to be using the MCP3208. Uh, it's an 8 channel ADC 12-bit uh, and uh, it uh, requires an external voltage reference, which uh, most ADCs do, and so I'm going to be using this to uh, record my two uh, current sensors and my four temperature sensors. And uh, another important thing is that it has an SPI interface so I can uh, acquire data from it uh, very quickly. High-speed data acquisition. Uh, for, my, for my temperature sensors I'm going to be using the MCP9700. Uh, I'm going to be getting it in the uh, T092 transistor package looks like this here in the bottom left corner. I'm just going to be uh, basically epoxying or somehow fastening these sensors to the MOSFETs that I want to uh, read the temperature of. Uh, for my voltage reference for my ADC, I'm going to be using this uh, analog device's uh, REF19. Uh, it's a 5 volt uh, voltage reference. Uh, fairly precise, uh, but nothing too crazy, and uh, uh, that that'll be my uh, voltage reference for my analog to digital converter. Uh, to isolate the uh, pulse width modulation signal from my uh, between my control board and my power board, I'm going to be using an optocoupler. Uh, so I'm just using a bog standard uh, optocoupler off the shelf. Um, it'll be more than fast enough. Um, to uh, accommodate the uh, likely uh, 20 kilohertz uh, pulse width modulation signal. Um, another thing my design is going to have is it's going to have uh, not only software current limit, um, but it's going to have hardware current limit. Now, in order to accomplish the hardware current limit, um, I need to compare the, uh, the voltage signal coming from the current sensor to some sort of reference. So this uh, comparator here is what I'm going to be using to compare the two voltages. I'll likely set up the reference voltage with some sort of resistor network and of course the, the other voltage is going to be coming from my uh, current sensor. So here's uh, just a bog standard uh, quad comparator I'm going to be using, the LM339. Uh, um, so I'll be using that to uh, compare my uh, voltage signals. Uh, these comparators are, are great because they're really quick and uh, they have a bit of hysteresis in them as well so they don't they don't oscillate. Um, as well with the hardware current limiting I'm um, also going to need an AND gate. Uh, um, this is a triple AND gate here, the SN54AC11. Uh, now this is going to take in my two uh, hardware current limit signals, one for my motor current and one for my battery current and combine it with my pulse width modulation signal so that if uh, if one of my two hardware current limiting signals goes low 
uh, it will block the pulse width modulation sig signal and it will cut off uh, all current, uh, all current, or all, all uh, signal drive to the MOSFET, so the current will be reduced to zero. Ah, so for the uh, main MOSFETs, I'm going to be driving them with a Micro 4452. It's a low side MOSFET driver capable of 12 amps peak, uh, very low delay time, a very high drive capability and uh, very low standby uh, power consumption. So this is ideal for driving those uh, main MOSFETs uh, on the low side. Uh, so this is what I'm going to be using. Um, for the synchronous rectification controller, I've chosen the uh, Diodes Incorporated ZXGD3101N8. What a part number, eh? And uh, basically all it requires is uh, two external biasing resistors and that'll set the point at which it will actuate the uh, flyback motor flyback MOSFETs. So uh, that's great because I may I may need to adjust those. Um, hopefully not, um, but I may need to um, because of course with those two MOSFETs uh, in series like that, uh, if they're on at the same time, you're going to have shoot through, right? It's going to basically short out uh, your battery pack. So I got to make sure that uh, this thing is set up correctly to shut off that MOSFET at the right time. And of course you want to turn it on at the right time too because then you want to minimize your uh, conduction losses. Alright, um, another thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need uh, several isolated DC to DC converters to power all this stuff uh, because I want, to, uh, I want to completely isolate my control board from my power board and I want to completely isolate my power supply that's powering everything uh, from everything. So whatever I'm using to power this motor controller up with, uh, be it uh, the 12 volt DC to DC converter on my bike, uh, regardless of whether it's isolated or not, I still want to make sure that uh, this, uh, the control board and the power board are completely isolated from that just to make sure nothing will, will go wrong. So uh, here is a industry standard uh, isolated DC to DC converter that I'll be using. Uh, I'll be using several of these. Uh, I'll need one uh, for the uh, low side MOSFET uh, drivers and I'll need another for that uh, synchronous rectification controller and I'm going to need another just to power my my control uh, my control board so I'm going to need a total of three of these things just to uh, uh, fully power everything in an isolated manner now another thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a lot of capacitance so I'm going to need uh, huge capacitors on that uh, battery plus and battery minus terminals like I mentioned before so I'm going to be using uh, uh, I haven't decided yet but I'm looking uh, at uh, these Panasonic capacitors this is just an example data sheet I've uh, pulled up here and uh, likely I'll be using some uh, other smaller capacitors as well uh, I found um, these ones here where'd they go here uh, these Nichicon ones as well that I might be using uh, just top-notch, uh, top-brand uh, aluminum electrolytic capacitors. I want to put the best stuff in here possible, so I don't want this thing to fail on me. Uh, I'm also going to be using uh, a couple small-value uh, ceramic capacitors in parallel with these because, of course, uh, they have much. They have uh, the frequency characteristics of the ceramic capacitors are uh, better suited to some uh, high-frequency. Um, uh, high frequency uh, noise suppression. Uh, these aluminum electrolytics are good for bulk storage and uh, lower frequency stuff. So uh, I'll also be using a, a combination of some several different capacitors there to get the best uh, uh, frequency response across the board. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much everything so far. Uh, of course I'm going to have quite a few connectors here. Uh, the layout is going to be of the board is going to be fairly interesting. There's going to be uh, several sections. It's going to be somewhat modular. Uh, I plan on making the power board in at least two sections, so likely uh, uh, maybe ten uh, MOSFETs per section. You know, five for the main MOSFETs and five for the flyback uh, motor MOSFETs. Is what I'm thinking initially. So I'll end up with two power boards that'll connect together. Uh, I'm thinking of just making the uh, control board a separate uh, a separate board that'll uh, sit on the side and, and do all the data acquisition and control. So that's the uh, the parts I've selected so far. 
Now I'm just skimming the surface here of, of just what parts I've chosen. I haven't I haven't even mentioned why I've chosen any of these parts. I've actually gone through a lot of calculations and a lot of deliberation to figure out uh, these parts and specific reasons why I've chosen them. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to go into all of the reasons why I've chosen all of these parts. Uh, just go on. It'll just go on forever. I think if I, these videos just go on forever if I think about if I go into all that stuff. So. Um, one thing I have done uh, that may not be obvious yet, um, well definitely not obvious yet, um, but for my control board what I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on using all through, mostly through hole components, uh, at least for the integrated circuits, and the reason for that is because I want to be able to uh, uh, mount all of the integrated circuits into uh, sockets. And the reason why I want to mount them into sockets is because if something goes wrong with my circuit or I need to do some tweaking, uh, it's really easy to just remove a chip and maybe put a jumper in or something like that. Uh, if, I, if I do a little surface mount through there, it's, it's pretty tough. I'd have to desolder things and make little wire links and uh, just become pretty messy pretty quick. I, I don't, of course, plan on making any changes to the, the design uh, mid-go. I want it to be perfect first round. Uh, but there's always the chance that it uh, it's not going to work out perfectly. Now, on the other hand, on the power board side of, side of things, uh, these MOSFETs here, uh, they're a TO247 package, uh, so they're through-hole. Um, but the rest of the circuit uh, circuitry that I plan on putting on the power board is uh, likely going to be surface mount. And the reason for that is because we're going to be dealing with some high voltages there. Um, it's It's a lot easier to get uh, good clearance uh, between parts if I use uh, surface mount because then it's only uh, going to be on one side of the board whereas if you use through hole components uh, you'll automatically have uh, uh, pads on both sides of the board so you're going to run into a lot of issues with uh, clearance for high voltages there so uh, I've mainly chosen surface mount components for the power board um, yeah so I think that's pretty much it for the parts uh, section of the video. These are the parts I've chosen thus far. Uh, these will likely change a little bit uh, with time, but uh, probably not much. I'm, I'm pretty dead set on these parts at the moment. Um, the next video we're going to go into the actual uh, schematic layout and the board layout. And you'll see we're going to have to do some pretty interesting things in order to uh, accommodate the MOSFETs, as well as uh, deal with all the power dissipation we're going to have in those MOSFETs and uh, as well uh, the layout considerations are going to be pretty important because we have a lot of uh, uh, reasonably high frequency stuff going on here so any uh, any stray inductance we have on the board uh, is going to be pretty critical so we're going to be uh, minimizing all of the track lengths uh, maximizing the tracks, track widths and uh, we're going to be designing it in such a way that uh, the board can, um, um, that the design is optimized uh, for all those things. All right, well, until next time, I'll see ya.